Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert Sean Stevenson here with my co-host, producer of the Model Health Show, the lovely, talented, brilliant, mm. so smart. Look Thank at you. You're going to touch the brain. You're I did. Do the I just Professor wanted to feel X how touch. fat it was. Yes. <laughs> Jade Harrell. <laughs> What's up, Jade? What's going on, Sean? How are you today? Today I am exceptional. 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 Yes. Oh, that's this a fun sounds one. complicated that's and right. fun and all that. What does that that's mean? That's right. Sensationally exceptional today. Okay. I made I get a new that. one. <laughs> I like it. I Thank like that. Thank you very it had much. A little, sh- mm-hmm. little in there. It did. Some of these words. You have to make your mouth do new things. <laughs> make neuro connections. I like that. Yeah. I like that a Thank lot. You. All right. Shout out to people making their mouth do new things. That's <laughs> very interesting. Yes, it is. So here's the thing. Yeah. These words, you're going to have to create a book. I will do that. Of your words. Absolutely. All right. And some words just make us feel good. Mm. You know, there's like words like Fluffy. Yes. Right. Do. Who doesn't like fluffy? You kitten, possibly. Kitten? <laughs> Come on, kitten. <laughs> right. That's so sweet. Like, just you hear kitten. And there's some people like, I can't stand cats. Right. Well, the, fluffy kitten, then. Right? right. Pillow. Baby anythings. Possums right. are even cute as babies. I like the word vibe. Oh, look at you. I don't know. I don't know why. I just like vibe. You know? You know, and that's what we're doing. We create a vibe. There's a vibe in this studio. Always. And I'm grateful to have you in it. You helped to create that vibe. Give thanks. Right? Mm-hmm. With your, with your, what's the word? Colorful self. Oh. <laughs> Not colorful self. <laughs> oh, exceptional. Exceptional mm-hmm. personality. Thanks, Sean. And beauty. So thank you. Mm-hmm. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the show today. My goodness, we've got one of my good friends on the show. One of my favorite people on the planet. Yeah. And he is a true He's a hero walking, talking, yes. He's a hero super to me. Super hero. Yes. <laughs> I right, put super on the front there of that. There you go. And then put duper super on the duper. end. Yes, That's man. Right. <laughs> just a just an incredibly talented, gifted, giving. He's also yeah. one of the most giving human beings mm-hmm. that I've ever met as well. And uh, just here to drop the knowledge today as well. And uh, he's been on the show before. And Whoa. this was over two years ago. First of all, we're pretty awesome. I can't believe time that. has flown by exactly. like that. His his That episode mm-hmm. is so mm-hmm. good. It's it is absolutely epic yeah. in him sharing his story. But today we're going to really focus on some tangible goodies for you to walk away with to improve your learning capacity, for you to improve your focus, yeah. your memory. Mm-hmm. This is the memory expert. Mm-hmm. All right. And we have him on the show for you guys today. Oh, but really quickly, man. let's give a shout out to our show sponsor, Onnit.com. Please do. Do guys, them right. listen to this. Listen to this. Mm-hmm. Onnit.com forward slash model. All right. You know where to go. Right. Alpha brain. <laughs> we're talking about the brain today. We got to talk about alpha brain. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Earth-grown nutrients used to make this clinically proven nootropic. Right. All right. All right. Do you know I what nootropics are? You know what that nootropics means are? It's good for my brain. Look at you. Like it's good for my brain. Right. Like, I want to touch it again. Touch again. Right. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Kinesthetic. <laughs> yeah. Now. That's the kind of learner do you I know, am. Guys, it, it it is very very. First of all, lots of people want to do experiments with in, in clinical trials with their products. Mm-hmm. It's a great idea in the theory, but it is rare. We're talking about a percent of a percent of companies that actually do that, to put their money behind their, their mouth and their message. And that's what they've mm-hmm. done. I mean, it's a huge investment to do a clinical trial, and they've done it. They've actually found it's clinically proven to uh, increase your focus, mm-hmm. your cognitive function. Alpha brain is the real deal. Yes, all I right? can speak for that. And here's mm-hmm. why I love it so much. The big underlying thing is that it's from earth grow nutrients. So this isn't something that's found in, like, literally just came out of nowhere, mm-hmm. kind of synthetic um, manifestation powers. <laughs> that reminds me of uh, I've been watching Agents of Shield. So oh, we're man. talking about totally awesome superheroes, superheroes today, yep, and Jim yep. can geek out with me all day with this <laughs> stuff. But Agents of Shield yeah. and this guy is just like there's certain laws. I love how they talk about the laws and kind of bring all these superhero powers back to reality mm-hmm. in a way. Mm-hmm. You know and that there's a way for this to happen, and it's like the Einstein. Um, uh, I think it was Einstein Rosin um, theory, but basically stuff cannot. Uh, th- there's all this kind of spooky activity happening where stuff can be kind of moving in and out of dimensions, right? And so, um, and also that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Mm-hmm. And there's this guy, he's a villain, and he's kind of creating things out of nothing. It's like, that's not from nothing. Yeah. Like, and one of the scientists was like, you know, you're pulling that from another place, it's another dimension. Somewhere. And that dimension is going to implode on this one. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like a crazy mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Ghost Rider's there. See? Uh, 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 <laughs> they've got uh, all the different agents there. Uh-huh. They've got... Uh, what's the what's the main character? Coulson. Coulson. They got mm-hmm. Agent Coulson there. <laughs> I could picture him. I couldn't think of his name. I'm That's why you. I need Jim today. Uh-huh. All right, Agent Coulson. He's just the he's the glue, right? Yeah. That holds a lot of yeah. these kind of superhero yeah. movies. I'm glad he together, got his man. props because he yeah. he lays it on the got line. His own and show. Always have. Yes. 
Come on. This was good. This Love was it. this was due for so, him. So, anyways, guys, Plus back to never get enough. Back to Alpha Braid. Yeah, how about Make that? sure to head over <laughs> check that out. On it.com <laughs> forward slash model. It's o n n i t dot com forward slash model for ten percent off all of your health and human performance supplements. They've also got the Hemp Force Protein, Albumin, mm. Edestin. Remember those two words. These are the most bioavailable, usable. Uh, forms of protein for the human body, all right? Most likely is going to be edestin, which is found exclusively unique to hemp, mm-hmm. all right? So there might be some good stuff here for you with Hemp Force Protein, and it tastes good. It does. All right, please believe. I've had people message me. It's like, Sean, <laughs> I heard about hemp on your show, the hemp protein, and I went and bought some from whatever company X, shame, and shame. then I drank it, and then it was like drinking old ground-up <laughs> coffee beans from 1947 mixed <laughs> with um, powdered ants, and a little bit of um, a little bit of stevia, there you and that's go. what it tastes like. And it was horrible. I was like, I told you, right. him force tastes good. Mm-hmm. Make sure to check that out. So we love it. On that note, on it. dot slash model. Let's get to the iTunes review of the week. All right, this one says the podcast that changes lives. Derek Santiago, Sean and Jade. Here's my long overdue review. I'll try to make it special. I just turned thirty this past year and described it as my year of transformation. That is largely thanks to people like you who not only share invaluable information, but break it down into the practical steps. I've gained so much since discovering the Model Health Show a year ago that I didn't know where to begin with my review. So I'll share one story that I hope can be an example to others. My whole life, I've suffered from chronic asthma. In my mid-20s, I made my first attempt to reverse asthma naturally. I saw a naturopathic physician who put me on a strict diet, emphasizing what foods to remove. I followed that protocol, got off meds, and felt great for a few months. However, I eventually had a couple of serious asthma attacks, which after some hospital visits and antibiotics got me right back on prescription meds and in a more depressed state. Then a few months ago, I listened to the Model Health Show, Episode 101, Natural Treatments for Asthma. I saved it on my phone and listened to it every week for about a month until your recommendations really crystallized. You see, the difference is the natural path doctor only told me what not to eat, but didn't help me understand the why and equally more important, what to add in. I'm happy to report that I'm not taking any prescription asthma meds right now. You inspired hope that was lost. I'm eating more whole foods, plant-centric diet now, which includes green smoothies with camu camu and aloe vera. Additionally, I've lost nearly 50 pounds since this time last year. I continue to implement tools from Sleep Smarter, which is one of my favorite books. I've reclaimed the integrity of my microbiome and understand gut health infinitely more than I did previously. It's all connected. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sean and Jade. Peace, love, and health. From Derek. Uh, Derek, wow. I'm smiling from ear to ear. How about, yeah. And my hands are on my heart. I am just blown away Mm -hmm. because you said so many important things there. You crystallize the information. You mm-hmm. listened every week again and again to that same episode. And this is what yes, I again. try mm-hmm. to instill in people to do to make it a part of who you are. You know, we can learn things very quickly, as you're going to find out today. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also drilling that stuff down into the, into the cellular level in your, in, your, in your tissue matrix and making it a part of who you are. Mm-hmm. And you applied the information. That's why we all need to give it up for you yeah, and, to, and to thank you for being an example of what's possible and just an amazing story. So thank you so much for sharing that. And on that Med note, free baby. And, and on that breathing. note, <laughs> let's go ahead and get to our special guest Please. and our topic of the day. Yeah. Our guest today is the one and only Jim Quick. Come on. Real name. It's yeah. his real name. <laughs> <laughs> and he is the founder of Quick Learning and a widely recognized world expert in speed reading, memory improvement, brain performance, and accelerated learning. For two decades, he served as the mental coach to students seniors, entrepreneurs, and educators, and is an advisor to many of the world's leading CEOs and celebrities. After childhood brain injury left him learning challenged, Jim created strategies to dramatically enhance his mental performance. He has since dedicated his life to helping others to unleash their true genius and brain power to learn anything faster and to live a life of greater power, productivity, and purpose. And Jim's cutting-edge techniques, entertaining presentation style, mm-hmm. which, man, I love watching fun. him speak, <laughs> and impressive brain power feats, again, impressive, uh, have made him a frequent and highly sought-out trainer for top organizations with clients that include Virgin, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. Richard Branson, mm-hmm. Nike, Zappos, SpaceX, NYU, Fox Studios, Harvard, just keep going on and on. Uh, quicklearning.com is his online courses, uh, are used by students in over 100 countries. See. 
Jim has shared the stage with global leaders such as Sir Richard Branson and the Dalai Lama. What a range. Yeah. Uh, his work is featured in many uh, media outlets worldwide, including the New York Times bestselling book, Use Your Brain, Change Your Age. Dr. You Daniel Amen, one that. of our good yeah. friends. Yeah. Uh, he is the founder and curator of Superhero You. <laughs> Change Your Brain, Change the World, an annual learning conference, which I just spoke at recently, right. and oh, media right. property featuring a hand-picked all-star expert faculty and an audience of dynamic thinkers, doers, and dreamers. And I'd like to welcome to the Model Ooh. Health Show again, my good friend, Jim Quick. How you doing today, man? Um, I'm doing awesome, Sean. Thanks to you. Thank you, Jade. Yes. Glad to be back. I'm, I'm, I am I'm ex- what is it? Exceptional. <laughs> exceptional. I'm exceptional. Oh, yes. I, that's that's that sums it up right there. Oh, man. Let's go. Oh, I love I, it. I'm gonna tear you and your dictionary is so yeah. contagious. Jim, man, you are again just a true superhero, and uh, your work that you put together, uh, your video trainings, your courses, your um, events, mm-hmm. you you really do things at a high level. And I'd like to know. And of course, in the last episode, you shared your story. And which everybody will put that in the show notes. You need to go back and listen to the story. But I'd like to know what has driven you to keep up leveling your game personally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're on a mission. Uh, I mean, we're small and people, but big on purpose. Like, like the two of you. My my life's work is about helping people have better lives, improve their pe- their lives. And the way I do it is by unleashing that superpower between that everybody has between their ears called their brain. You know, this three pound matter that it doesn't come with an owner's manual. And they always mm-hmm. say that we use such a small percentage of its potential. And I, I, we actually, it's a myth, we actually use all of our brain. But uh, a lot of people, some people actually use it better than others in terms of its efficiency. And I always thought back in school, growing up with learning challenges from a head injury, I always thought it was interesting school would teach you what to learn, math, history, science, Spanish, but not classes on how to learn, how to focus, how to concentrate, how to be creative, how to think faster, how to learn any subject or skill faster. And uh, I'm totally stoked to be back. I, I love <laughs> our conversation. I, I could talk to you for days and days and days, the two of you, and geek out over superheroes and, and brain hacks. And uh, I'm, I'm really glad to be here. And I, I'm committed to making this next this session here that everyone here is you're listening to and and watching and such, you know, one of your most favorited shared episodes mm. ever. We're gonna. I want to talk about better clarity of mind. I want to talk about increasing thinking speed. I want to talk about enhancing focus and attention. I want to talk about longer concentration, improving memory, learning abilities, and a better mood because these are things that, that we need now. Modern day superheroes, you want to be equipped with this because there are modern villains, super mm. villains, if you will, right, sure. that weren't here before. I mean, we have... D- 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 Digital distraction, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's everything that that's, that's online nowadays. We have digital dementia, where it's just people are outsourcing their brains to their smart devices. They can't remember simple things anymore. We have aging brains. We have information overload and overwhelm, where if you're listening to this right now, you feel like you have too much to to learn and too little time. You have books on your shelf. You haven't you bought and you were excited about it at the time, but you didn't read past the first chapter. Mm. I mean, it becomes, you know, as our friend Lisa Nichol talks about it, it becomes shelf help and not self help <laughs> <laughs> anymore. So uh, that's I want let's let's pack this in. Uh, I want people should be taking some serious notes on this, sharing this episode with all your friends because this is what you should have learned back in school. And this I think the biggest lever when we're talking about a force multiplier for your life, if you want greater productivity, if you want greater peace of mind, greater performance, greater profitability and prosperity, it all starts with unleashing the superpower of your brain. Yeah, Yeah. so uh, true, man. Man, I'm just excited. Everybody, make sure, seriously, have your your pencil, your notepad ready, or pen, whatever you got, a little fancy pen. (laughs) Or device. Or (laughs) device, right. Just make sure you're ready to take some notes. Uh You remember that thing that was called a pencil that I used to write stuff down? Right, (laughs) right. But make sure you're taking notes Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. these tips and strategies, many of them I've employed in my own life, learning from Jim personally, and this is game changing. You know, this is stuff that has helped this show to be in the capacity that it is. Real talk, because it's a part of me. And it is the most important thing to learn how to use this amazing brain that we have. And that's what Jim's work is all about. Mm -hmm. But Jim, I know this starts with our mindset around learning and about around just being able to accomplish all these things. So let's talk a little bit about that first. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that uh, the two of you know that it's your your life is a reflection of your thinking and your thoughts. And it begins with your, your mindset. And I always when I'm working with 
champions, whether they're Olympic champions or they're you know big actors or, or people that run companies and such, I noticed that they share three powerful elements to uh, like a superhero mindset, if you will. And I call them the three G's, uh, three G's. And the first G stands for they have a growth mindset. And you, the two of you know this, everyone <laughs> listening knows this already because what I love about your community is it's like kindred spirits. You know what yes, I mean? Yes. Like people who are committed to lifelong learning and, and personal growth. And a growth mindset is important. A lot of people are familiar with Carol Dweck's work. Yeah. Uh, the book uh, that everyone should read is called Mindset. It's a seminal work on it, talking about the difference between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. And I think real life superheroes, modern day superheroes. And I'm not talking about superheroes like leaping over buildings and shooting lasers out of their eyes and stuff like that. I'm talking mm -hmm. about people who found um, who are looking for and searching and discovering their superpower. And I mean, like their unique ability, their strength, their talent, their purpose, if you will. But just having a superpower doesn't make you a superhero. You got you to be able to use it to be able to serve. And that's why I love talking with the two of you and everyone in your community, because I know you guys are ravenous about this. So I would say number one element for mindset, you need a growth mindset, knowing that when I do demonstrations on stage and I memorize a uh, hundred people's names or a hundred numbers or a hundred words, forwards and backwards, I always tell people, I don't do this to impress you. I really do this to express to you what's really possible. Because the truth is every single person who's listening to this, our conversation today, can do it also. Regardless of your age, regardless of your background, regardless of your career, your education level, your financial situation, your gender, your IQ, everyone could do it. It's just you weren't taught. And if anything, you were taught a lie. You were taught a lie that you know you're not good enough. You're not. You're, your intelligence is fixed. Your memory potential is fixed, like your shoe size. And what we've discovered in the past twenty years is actually, it's actually wrong. It's we've discovered more about the, the human brain in the past twenty years than the previous two thousand years. And we know that your brain is the most powerful supercomputer device, uh, you know, in the universe. And uh, and so that's really what it's about. And then it's not fixed like your shoe size. It right. can grow. And so that's the exciting part is everyone here can improve drastically. And so growth mindset is number one. Um, the second G, I would say, for mindset is, uh, and you, you two of you would appreciate this, is grit. <laughs> grit, you sure know what do. I mean? Sure um, people do. who achieve superhuman levels of extraordinary uh, goals in their life um, where they could be, do, have, share at the highest form of what they are in terms of self-expression, they go through challenges, right? Because with challenge comes change. And often when you go through your struggles, when you're talking about the superhero journey, um, you know, Joseph Campbell's work, there's always this stage of self-discovery and struggle. But when you go through struggle, you get your strength. But it really takes a level of grit to go through these China challenges. And so um, recently I... Uh, I got invited to watch a, a boxing match, and I'm a little bit torn because I, I, I love um, I love seeing people compete. I love people who are who exhibit high levels of excellent genius in any area, um, and yet I know what some sports will do to your brain you right. know, when you're getting punched. But you don't or, love getting punched in the head, yes, <laughs> or, or tackled or, or what have you, and all mm -hmm. the concussions and the challenges. But there was a big boxing fight that was going on, and uh, I get this call. Um, from Sylvester Stallone, I mean, of all people, right? Mm -hmm. to, he's like, why don't you come over and watch the boxing match at my home? And I'm like, wow, to watch this you know, championship battle you know, with Rocky is just amazing. Right. And I'm, yeah. I'm there, I'm sitting on the couch, and we're watching the, these two men battle it out. And I, I, if you, <laughs> it's me, and then to my left is Stallone, and to his left is Arnold, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, the Terminator. Get and out. I, and I swear, if somebody took a picture of that couch, people would be like, who, who, who photoshopped that Asian dude? That? <laughs> but um, the reason I bring it up is because, you know, afterwards, I always feel like genius leaves clues, right? Yeah. And uh, everyone who just succeeds at high levels, I want to know how they do it because I always believe there's a method behind the magic. When, when I do these demonstrations and people know I read a book a day or do these kind of things, I always tell people it's not magic, there's a method. Right? And it's usually invisible. And what I love to do as a personal trainer for the brain is show people how to actually do this magic for themselves so they can have more magic in their life. So I asked, uh, I remember asking the two of them, uh, Sly and Arnold, I was like, what, what does it take to be, to be a champion like these guys? What does it take? And I remember Arnold, I'll remember forever, he says, Jim, what it takes is 
difference that makes a difference is that people, champions are able to push past the pain period, push mm. past the pain period because, you know, as you know, to grow anything, whether it's a muscle or your mind or your business or, right, you know, it takes your, your, your reaching, right? You're stretching yourself. And a lot of people, it gets uncomfortable and that's a challenge and they back away. But when I'm talking about mindset, the first one being growth, the second one is having grit, you know, a level of determination, a high level of persistence that keeps you going. And really part of it is knowing your why that you're doing something. Like the two of you are some of the most purpose-driven people that I know. You know your why in terms of why you're here and that gets you to do it and be able to share with all these countless people around the world because you hear these incredible stories like in, that you share like on your podcast. And so having grit is so important um, to be able to push past the pain period because that's the difference that makes a difference. And then finally, the last G I would give people in terms of mindset, once you have a growth mindset and you have something like a, a grit mindset, um, I would say giving. Mm -hmm. Giving. Oh, it yes, is, sir. Is, to be a superhero, it doesn't just take superpowers. You have those superpowers, but what are you going to do with them? How are you going to make the world a little bit better place? And I don't mean the whole world. Uh, I mean, just like your world. You know, your, how do you make the, the world better? How do you use your gifts, your unique ability, talents, strengths to help your friends, to help your clients, to help uh, your community, your neighborhood and such? And I just think those three G's are the common traits of people who are happy and, and, and fulfilled at the highest level. Oh, yeah. You know, I just want to yeah. kind of go in reverse here really quickly. Giving, mm -hmm. you just had said something so important that you know, it's like, okay, I want to learn faster. I want to be able to read more books and this whole thing. But why? Right. Yeah. You know, if you can tie to something bigger than yourself, it's not like I want to do this so I can know a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't mm -hmm. it be so awesome to know a lot of stuff? I know I'm not going to go on Jeopardy or anything, <laughs> but, uh, and Alex Trebek, he's kind of a jerk, whatever, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I just want to know a lot of stuff. And But if you tie it to, mm -hmm. I want to be able to, to serve at a higher level. I want to be able to mm -hmm. give, fill in the blank. And so for me, and I've shared this multiple times, Whenever I'm reading new material, I'm thinking, as I'm reading, how can I teach this? Yep. Mm. Yeah. And I'm thinking, that's, how can I share it? That's how mm -hmm. purpose-driven it is and how giving is tied into even this learning for me. And that's why I'm so passionate about learning. That's why I've become much better at it and learning these techniques from Jim. I could, I could, I could tell you on this, yep. and this is, this is like a aha idea here is what you're saying is that when you teach something you learn and one one of the ways I teach people to learn faster is by teaching it because that's a great way of accelerating your own learning when you're listening to this podcast this show and you're thinking oh how can I teach this to somebody tomorrow it forces a different level of concentration it forces a different level of ownership of the material because here here's the tweetable if you will when I teach something I get to learn it twice Mm -hmm. When I teach something, I get to learn it twice and, you know, share that out. I sure will. Uh, yeah. and, you know, a hashtag <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> model health um, because that, that be, we do learn it better. And that's why we learn anything. There's two reasons to learn anything. One, what we could do for you. The second is what you could do to pay it forward to somebody else. It's like you learn to earn and then you return. Mm -hmm. Learn, earn, and then you return it out there. And, uh, and that, that's a wonderful way it is to, is to give it back. Perfect. So let's, let's kind of go in now and talk a little bit about, so we covered a mindset mm -hmm. and this yes. is an incredibly important growth mindset. Um, Dr. Carol Dweck's work mm -hmm. and looking at the growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. So we'll put that in the, in the show notes as well, you versus you episode. Um, but that's incredibly important, but also that grit. I'm so glad he brought this up. I didn't know he's going to talk about this mm -hmm. because I've seen Jim, even right now, he's persevering through a new challenge and adapting to it and becoming better. And he knows that those challenges are there to manifest some kind of latent qualities that are dormant in us. You know, like there's all these great things that we want to achieve, but are you that kind of person that can actually do those things? Can you handle it? You know, and I think that, you know, our challenges really help us to build up our wattage. And I think it's so awesome for us to be proactive in putting ourselves in challenging situations instead of life handing you new ones. Like, yeah, okay. Sure. You've been just sitting on the couch for far too long. I know Madden online, you know, there's a lot of games going on. You, <laughs> Halo, whatever you're into, but uh, here you go. Yeah. Instead of like proactively putting yourself in challenging situations so you can become more. And uh, of course, giving we've talked about as well. But let's shift gears now and talk about something that is a bit of a deficiency today. And many people are deficient in their ability to focus. 
Yes. So how can we shift that, Take kind of take back our focus and be able to, because that's a big part of learning is being able to focus completely. on the material. Comple- completely. I would say that the, the topics that we've talked about in your past shows, whether it's remembering names or speed reading, uh, to learn anything nowadays, it requires focus, right? How many people read a page in a book, get to the end and just forget what they just read? <laughs> Big All challenge, right? Or how many people are sitting there and they're trying to, to multitask and do different things? And we live in this age of, when I talk about superheroes, modern day superheroes, and we talk about supervillains, and one of the biggest ones is distraction. And we're training ourselves. Like one of the things I always tell people is the difference. There's yes, you should have a to-do list, um, but more powerful for me is my not to-do list. Nice. You know, things not to focus on because the brain is not set up to be able to handle all this, uh, the multitasking. You know, in fact, the multitasking is a myth. It's just, it's been proven oh, time and time again. It is impossible to actually multitask. People think that they're doing two intensive things at once and it's not even possible because we're deluding ourselves and it's a lie. It's not possible. The brain is only capable of focusing on one thing at a time. And more than one thing, it, what it does is stresses the brain and it creates cortisol, it creates just adrenaline, which diminishes your brain's ability to really accomplish the things that it needs to do. So number one, I would dispel the myth of multitasking and not try to do too many things at once. And always saying no to things is always good. One of my you know, f- favorite business book is uh, Good to Great, right? Mm-hmm. You say no to the good so you can say yes to the great. Um, one of the things you, may, you mentioned is something that you've been coaching me with is some sleep challenges that I've been having. And I, I don't talk about this a lot publicly, but I'll, I'll do it to honor your work because your, your book is one of the seminal works on this thing. Because I think one of the most important learning hacks there are is our life hacks in, ge- in general. The top one has to be getting, getting deep, relaxed, you know, rejuvenate sleep. Because without that, you're just not going to perform anyway. You're not going to be a great learner. Your memory, you can do all the memory tricks and, and speed reader tricks in the world. But if you got a crack, you know, a crummy night's sleep the night before, you know, that's really going to diminish you. So I would say that um, the goal when, when it comes to, to having better focus is first stop multitasking and also say no to things. Because, you know, my, my sleep issue is part of it is genetic because I have a, a condition like sleep apnea. So it's obstructive, something that it's hard to breathe when I sleep. Um, it's not that my mind is racing at all. It's very calm, actually. But between that and the global travel on the airplane, speaking all the time, it really messes my, my routine. And so one of the reasons I, I bring this up specifically is it's forced me to really um, have this essentialism kind of approach where I say, if I don't feel like it's a heck yes, then it's a heck no. Because if you have a finite amount of energy, and we do all have a finite amount of focus or energy or good decisions, then it forces you to really do the things that are most important to you and put first things first in your life. And so I think one of the, a few ideas on how to have better focus, first, don't multitask because it doesn't work. Because there's, there's what they call a switching cost, going from one activity to another. It could take up anywhere from five to 20 minutes to refocus your concentration right. on that task. So you're actually losing ground. Plus, your brain is not set up to handle it. So it goes into stress mode, which creates you know these hormones, stress hormones that actually, which is good for fight or flight and protecting you from saber two tires. It's not good if you need to study for a test. It's not good if you have to give a presentation at work. It's not good if you have to remember someone's name. Another thing I would say is have a not to do list. Like for example, I know I knew you, you do talk about this also is just not, you know, be careful how you use your smart devices. And a lot of people touch them 150 plus oh, times yes. a day. And it's the very first thing that they touch in the morning. It's the very last thing they touch at night. And besides all the, you know, the blue lights and everything that's you know, prevents like the melatonin, you know, development and stuff like that. It's also not really great to wake up and check your emails because then it puts you in a reactive mode. Superheroes don't, you want to be proactive. You don't want to just open up your, your email, see everything and get all these dopamine hits from social media that kind of burn you out. And then all of a sudden you feel fatigued, right? So I would say, say no to a lot of different things um, that that's important. And also part of, part of it is, is focus is an exercise, right? I, I teach uh, a four-step way of learning faster through better focus. I would say, I, I tell people it's fast. So when everyone wants to write this down, F-A-S-T, F-A-S-T, four ways of learning things faster with better focus, F-A-S-T. Number one, F stands for, you remember the acronym FAST, F stands for forget. So if you want to be a faster learner with better focus, forget about what you already know about the subject. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're listening to this show and you already, oh, I did a little bit of 
research into learning or memory. Set, forget what you already know about it aside so you can focus on what, what you're learning so you can have an open mind to it. I also think that's also helped you with your focus. Also, the F stands for forget, but forget about what you would know about the subject so you can empty your cup so you can put new stuff in it, but also forget about um, your limitations. And what I mean by that is a lot of people have this unconscious beliefs about uh, that's keeping them from having focus or keeping them from learning better is that, oh, I'm just too old, right? Mm. They say things like, oh, I'm just horrible with names mm-hmm. or I'm just forgetful. That's what I am. And, you know, they say those two words are the most powerful words in, in, in the English language, two small words, I am, because whatever you put after that determines your life. It determines your destination. It determines your destiny, right? Where you're going. And so be careful what you do that. And so forget about your limitations temporarily. And then the third thing I would say forgetting about is also forgetting about situational things. You know, the mind, they've done all these studies at Harvard and Princeton. Uh, George Miller uh, did a study called five, uh, seven plus or minus two, that seven minus two is five, seven plus two is nine, five to nine bits of information. So if I gave you, the two of you, a list of 20 words to memorize, if you weren't using one of our techniques, you probably remember five to nine of them, yep. right? If you go to a party, meet 30 people, and um, afterwards, you probably remember five to nine of them, about seven of them, because that's what you could do without any kind of technique. Um, and so let's say you're listening to this conversation here, and actually, recent studies actually says it's less than that. Um, and so let's say you're listening to this show, but part of your focus is thinking about the kids and part of your focus is thinking about your work. And not only is a very small part to be actually present here listening. So I would say forget about anything that's not urgent and important. So that's the F and fast. Is you, you have to have better focus. Just forget about your limitations. Forget about what you know about the subject temporarily and forget about what's going on situationally. Um, the, the A in fast that's going to help you have better focus and learn faster is being active because it's active focus, right? And focus is an activity that you're engaged in. It's not passive. And learning is, here's the tweetable for everyone listening, learning is not a spectator sport. Mm-hmm. Learning is not, a, is not this passive. You know, if, if we're talking about supervillains, about information overwhelm, that the amount of information is doubling every year, let's say, you know, it's, it's, it's a scary thought, but one of the challenges, we all grew up with this same education, 20th century education that prepared us for a 20th century world, which at the turn of the century was working in factories and farms and just following simple directions. But now we live, you know, in an age of electric cars and spaceships going to Mars, but our vehicle of choice when it comes to learning, is like a horse and carriage. It's so bad. Yeah. And so it ta- that education taught us to be passive, to sit and and consume information and don't talk to your neighbors and stuff like that. So if you want better focus, you have to be active in it. You have to ask questions. You have to take notes. That helps with your focus incredibly. And finally, the S and the T in fast that helps you have faster focus and faster learning. The S is state. And you mm-hmm. could appreciate this, the two of you, that all learning is state dependent. All learning is state dependent. That the key to good memory, one of the keys in a good memory is that information tied to emotion becomes a long-term memory. Information tied, combined with emotion, becomes a long-term memory. And you know this, listening to this, as if you heard a song and it brings you back years ago, or you smell a food or you smell a scent, and it, bring, it brings you back to childhood and such, because emotion tied to information becomes a long-term memory. Um, the same part of your brain, even the hippocampus, is, is processing a lot of that. And so knowing that is the case, all learning is state dependent. And so if you learn something in a bored or dull state, let's say on a zero to 10, it's a zero, zero times any information is going to be zero, nice. right? And that's the challenge. And that's why a lot of us, if we're quizzed what we learned back in school, most of us will remember because the state we were in is we were just bored, mm. right? And zero times anything is zero. Yeah. And so you, who controls our state, right? We, we do. Superheroes, they take responsibility for the state that they're in. And I always tell people it's the difference between a, being a thermometer and a thermostat, <laughs> right? A thermometer reacts to the environment. It reflects what the environment gives it. And in fact, it's a victim of the environment, Right. But a thermostat is different. Thermostat, you, you know, you set a standard, you set a vision, you set a goal, and the environment raises uh, and changes accordingly. And that's the difference. And so you are that thermostat. So when it comes to state, you control how you feel, the mood that you're in. And you can do it very simply by changing your thoughts, 
right? Because you are in the, you're a reflection of your thoughts and changing your, your body, right? You know, when your body moves, your brain grooves. We know that through physiology, one of the best ways of increasing your memory, increasing your learning, increasing your focus is physical activity, yeah. right? We know when you're working out and you create those, the, those hormones that activate, uh, you know, the, your, your different parts of your brain, it's a great time to study is right after you work out. Because uh, you actually are smarter in that way. So state, all learning is state dependent. So control your state. Be in a state of, of flow, a state of curiosity, a state of childhood wonder. They say, the quote is, uh, trade your cleverness for bewilderment. Mm. Trade your cleverness for bewilderment. Because when we feel like we're too clever, we don't learn anything because we don't have an open mind. And finally, the T and fast is, is what we just we discussed is teach. Learn to teach. Because when you get to learn it, you get to, you know, when you teach it, you get to learn it twice. And that, that's really a, a four-part system for just having better focus. And I included in that, besides forgetting about what's not important and being active in your focus and controlling your state and teaching, because teaching is going to laser focus you. If you had to give a presentation on this tomorrow, you would be paying focused attention, mm-hmm. right, if you had to teach it. Um, but outside of that, I, I do mindfulness training. I journal every single day. I, I do my meditation every single day because focus, again, it's impossible. The brain is only capable of focusing on one thing at a time. And, it, and uh, uh, to feel calm, to feel that cool, to feel collected, like a calm mind is, is, a, is a healthy brain. Love that. Oh, man. Absolutely. You know what? This is so amazing because it's tying together s- s- multiple things that we've mm-hmm. really kind of focused in on during the show. And this is coming from somebody who he's the guy that the top people in the world call on Mm -hmm. to help them to remember, uh, you know, their script or to be able to learn faster or to improve their company. You know, like I mentioned some of the companies he's worked with before, but you know, yeah, just, we've got to follow Jim on Instagram, by the way. Uh, what's your Instagram, Jim? Jim quick, K W I K Jim quick. At yeah. Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. At Jim Quick, at J I M K W I K. I think he has the most popping yeah. <laughs> Instagram page ever, man. He just hangs out with some of the most cool people in the world. Dude, I you love know. your stories. I, I was telling you earlier before, I, I watch you, I watch your workout with you and your family. I mean, it's inspiring. That's what superheroes do. Yeah. You know, they put on, they get up every morning and they put on their capes and they go through their, their own, we all have our own struggles and, and things that we're facing and everything, but they, but they do the work. Yeah. And here's the thing when going back to grit and I, cause I know if you're listening to this, because I, I grew up with brain injury, right? So I was labeled learning challenge. And I have years of sleeping only two hours a night from my sleep apnea because I would stop breathing 150 times a night, basically a more than 10 seconds each. It's like somebody coming in and choking me that many times. I mean, it's a scary thing. But these are the kind of things, I mean, people go through that and certainly a lot even deeper and heavier challenges. And I'm saying, do the work of what's most important to you, because here's the other reason why you do the work. And if you're struggling right now and you're going through challenges, that I could tell you that there's always this, there's this light. And, and the other reason what motivates me when you go and think about the why and what can most motivate and inspire you is that people are watching you. You know, people, yeah. they, they would understand if you gave up right now under the circumstances of what you're going through, whether it's relationship stuff or health stuff or financial stuff. But I'm saying that even though people would say it's okay to give up, even, you know, or what you're facing is that if it's important to you, and it's important to your life is to persevere and have that grit because you inspire people with your grace and your grit. And, uh, and people get inspiration. And that, that's part of the superhero's journey too, is they give you hope and they give you real help. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad that you brought it back to this grid because, you know, I was, I was wondering if you would mention that, you know, about the recent struggle, uh, that you've been going through and even people, uh, they might not really realize this, but you haven't done that much kind of speaking because your voice is still recovering from a procedure that you had done. And I'm so grateful just to even have you here and for people to be able to tune in and get this information. But you are somebody who is really, because, you know, when people look at your life from the outside and they see the cool stuff that you do, they don't understand the work Mm -hmm. and the effort. Like Mm -hmm. literally, there are parts of, you know, his life that were just a tremendous beyond belief struggle that he was working through, but he was continuously working. I mean, every time he talked to me, it was like, well, you know, we'd spend some time talking about this thing too. He's always scanning and he's like, I I asked Tony Robbins about this. I asked this person, uh, Dr. Michael Bruce, another friend of ours, a friend of the show, you know, always trying to gain information to really find, uh, to get a handle on this. And he's actually one of the 
smaller percentage of people who, you know, we talk about sleep apnea, it's usually tied to excess weight on your frame. Mm -hmm. Who, mm-hmm. yeah, and she's like looking at you, it's kind of skinny. That's not, but you know, it's just, I saw you, I saw you. That's not his problem. He's got some <laughs> biceps though. That's but right. and, uh, here's the thing is that, you know, there can also be these obstructions in your, yeah. in your normal breathing. And, you know, for mm-hmm. you to, to show up and do the things you've done mm-hmm. despite those challenges is absolutely mind blowing. But at the same time, Moving forward now, I'm excited to see what's coming up mm-hmm. next. And That's with that said, up. with that said, just really quickly, uh, one of the things that he talked about was this switching cost, mm-hmm. right? And this, we we talked about this with Jay Papazan, the a co-author of the mega hit book, The One Thing, and understanding that if you're actually focused on, you know, accomplishing a specific goal, whatever it is, maybe there's some material that you need to learn and you've got your phone chimes coming in, you've got your alerts on your phone coming in from either, you know, text. Instagram, Facebook, whatever's coming in, it takes you five to 30 minutes to get back in the flow. If you were, maybe you're working for 20 minutes and you've got a good flow going, writing a paper or a book or whatever, and that's going to, it takes away your focus. You can't help it. Turn your messenger off for the time that you're focused and committed on doing that work. And also, you know, I love the acronym, the uh, FAST. That's powerful stuff, man. Yes, yes. And how much went to F for forget. Yeah, um, especially the part about the F, how many components for F with forgetting limits and forget what you already know and then forget about the situations that may be calling for your attention right now, mm. you know, with that distraction yeah, villain. Love it. Yes. love it, love it. You know, and uh, one other thing I just want to highlight here was state and how yeah. important that is. I'm so grateful for you sharing that because mm-hmm. oftentimes, whether it's for our learning or for uh, just being able to do the things we want to do in our life, we're usually not compelled to do it because we're in a disempowering state and literally just changing your state, changing your body. And sometimes you could think, of course, it's not as easy as it sounds when you've got a repetitive negative thought. And Dr. Daniel Amen calls him these, these ants, these automatic negative thoughts. <laughs> I love it. And to replace it with a positive, affirmative, empowering thought, it's not as easy as, as, it, as it sounds sometimes. But physically moving, changing your body, changing your state physically changes your brain yeah. immediately. So that's something that you have power to do. And also, I wanted to just share this one last part, which was I love the thermostat thermometer yep. analogy. And yep. this is something we always encourage people to do, Jim, is to bring it to it. You bring it to mm. the environment. Instead of being subject to what the environment is trying to impose upon you, you bring the light to the environment. You bring the the humor, the joy, the positivity, whatever it is that you want to experience, bring it to it mm-hmm. and stop looking for it outside of yourself. He now, said set the atmosphere, you set the changes of the environment as yeah. opposed to responding to them. So this is a good place to segue into actually recalling names and yeah. being able to remember some things that could be valuable for all of our lives. So let's talk a little bit about recall for, you know, things like names, for bullet points you might have for, for yeah. a pre- presentation. Let's talk about that. So, well, memory is is one of the biggest force multipliers there are. You improve your memory, every area of your life gets better. And, and you know this because when we're forgetful, if you were to lose half of our memories and you forgot half the names of the people that you know or you forgot half of the information you know or half the words that you know, that would greatly impact your productivity, your performance, your prosperity, certainly. But being able to be more efficient at it is huge. I believe two of the most costly words, especially at work or even in our life, are I forgot. Mm-hmm. You know, I forgot to do it. I forgot to bring it. I forgot that meeting. I forgot that person's name. And that's like one of the biggest things. If one of the most important, the number one business etiquette, networking, ability, skill, you name it, is the ability to remember people's names and faces. I mean, it's really hard to show somebody that you're going to care for their business, their future, their health, their finances, whatever it is that you do, if you don't just care enough to remember like their name or their spouse's name or their children's name, the things that are most important to them. You know, it's said that the name is the sweetest sound to a person's ear. Mm-hmm. Name is the sweetest sound to a person's ear. So yeah, a couple of really quick tips that we could give people that's going to help you immediately. You could do this right now. Um, we talked about the, the three keys to better memory in a previous episode, M-O-M. Um, so I won't repeat that, mom, but that you got to go back and revisit that because that's really the, 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 the starting point of it. Um, you know, the M, just go, go listen to the episode. But mm-hmm. the M stands for motivation, and that's your motivation for remembering people's names. And we talked about how to tap into that motivation in the previous episode. The O stands for observation, which is really paying attention 
and we talked about you know each time I had met Bill Clinton and how his incredible memory came from and his powerful presence came from being powerfully present with people, right? And so a lot of people they're not forgetting a name, they're just not observing it to begin with. And then the M is the mechanics on actually how to do it. So I'll give you one right now. It's uh, we talked about this earlier. It's a be suave. And so here, this is basically seven tips for remembering the name and the face of the people that you want to, whether it's short-term or long-term, be suave. And very quickly, uh, no pun intended, K-W-I-K, <laughs> everything's about quick. Um, because talking about names, like, like you're right, that is really my, my, my name. It's my, it's my father's name, my, my grandfather's name and such. I didn't change it to do what I do. But you could say my life and my destiny was pretty planned yes, out. Yes. And so remembering coming to names, name is very, uh, it's attached to a person's identity. So I would say be suave. So next time you're meeting people, you're at a wedding, you're at a conference, look in the mirror, check your makeup, check your, your clothing, but say to yourself, I'm going to be suave. B stands for believe. And I love this. This goes back to mindset, right? If you believe you can or believe you can't, either way you're right. You're right. And Henry Ford said that. If you believe you can or believe you can't, either way you're right. So you have to believe that you know how to be able to remember his names. And you know this because you know people know a couple hundred names easily if you go through. And so you have the ability to do it. It's just a certain reasons why you forget. But if you believe you can, believe you can, either way, you're right. And it starts there because I remember uh, Wayne Dyer actually has that book on it. But it, people always say, oh, I'll believe it when I see it. Mm. But it's not. It's, but it's actually the opposite. It's actually you'll see it when you believe it. Yes. You'll see it when you believe it. And, and so I would get rid of the negative self-talk that people have about remembering names. Just add simple three-letter word at the end. Say, yet. You know, I'm not good at remembering people's names yet. Or, or turn it to a positive. I am good at remembering names. Because that self-talk is important because I always tell people, and this is the tweetable, <laughs> your mind is always eavesdropping on your self-talk. <laughs> yes. Your mind is always eavesdropping on your self-talk. I remember I was preparing for a marathon and I was, you know, with a name like Quick, a lot of pressure. <laughs> One of the chapters was on the psychology of running a marathon, the mindset of it. And it said this verbatim, um, because I'm a memory expert, it said, your mind is a supercomputer and your self-talk is a program that will run. So if you tell yourself you are not good at remembering people's names, you will not remember the name of the next person you meet because you program your computer not to. Mm. I mean, just think about it. And so believe. Um, the E in be suave is exercise. And I don't mean physical exercise. Although people who are more, if you want the, the brain hack on it, it, it's the more you move, the more your brain's going to groove, right? Exercise, people don't realize, but your, your, your brain developed. The primary reason is that's there is for, to control your movement. Right. And so yeah. you want to be able to move um, for all the reasons. Anything, the precept I, I, I subscribe to is anything that's good for your heart is good for your head. Mm -hmm. You know, anything that's good for your heart is good for your head. Even, even when you look at the heart, it, you know, the, the, the artery, the first artery that's there uh, the, is the carotid one, right? And that feeds, it flows directly. It's flowing blood, oxygen, nutrients right from the heart, right, directly to your brain. Yeah. You know, it's so critical that, that heart, you know, uh, mind connection. And so I would say, um, when we're coming back to this, you know, exercise is important. But I mean, uh, not just physical exercise, practice. Because practice makes progress. Practice makes progress. Often people say practice makes perfect. And, you know, we don't believe in perfection, right? There's always another level. There's always a deeper place to go. So I would say that practice this. And the, so that's the bad news is it takes effort. But the good news is it doesn't take as much as many, many people think. And so practicing it for 21 to 30 days it becomes more of a habit. It's something that becomes second nature, just like driving a car, just like typing, you're doing it unconsciously. Um, but as the, as the old saying goes, what you practice in private, you're rewarded for in public. <laughs> yeah, you know, what you practice that. in private, you're rewarded for in public. Mm -hmm. And that's what shows up. Now, suave, very simple. S, the first thing I do when I meet somebody is I S, say the name. I say the name. And the reason why I say it, uh, number one, it allows me to hear it again from my voice. But the other reason I say it is I want to make sure I observed it. Going back to mom, the O is observation. A lot of people, at times you meet somebody and you're in a mall or you're at an event and there's background noise. You want to make sure you heard the name correctly. right? You don't want to have a 20-minute conversation with Ted and say goodbye, Ed. Right? And if you want to make it, if you're going to get corrected, correct, get corrected up front. The U in suave stands for use. You want to use the name in the conversation because everyone loves the sound of their own name. 
I mean, think about the emotion that's attached. We talked about information tied to emotion becomes a long-term memory. Think about the emotion that you learned early on when you learned to say your own name, Mm -hmm. when you learned to write your own name. Think about the love and the congratulations and the, you know, the positivity associated with that. And so you want to use the name. You don't want to abuse it. (laughs) <laughs> right, yeah. you don't want to use it too much. You don't, Jade. Thank you so much for having me. Jade, do you want to grab some lunch? Jade, Jade, what do you want to learn? Jade did that. That would be an abuse, right? Yeah. But you want to um, use it three or four times in the context of the conversation. It's great. Kids um, abuse names, man. Daddy, <laughs> dad. Hey, dad. Daddy, exactly. daddy. <laughs> but it's funny though because kids, that's how they learn. You know, they yep. they they make fun of names. You know what yeah. I mean? They 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 they'll take someone like David. David. David is a David, and David, you know, and then David's <laughs> yes. in therapy because he doesn't know what a David is, you know, like for 10 years. But that's how kids learn it. They have fun. They use uh, imagination. And so you want to use it three or four times in the conversation. And then A in suave is ask. You know, everyone, you know, what's everyone's favorite subject? It's it's not necessarily travel or health, right? It's 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 themselves, right? And it's ask, ask. You could ask, oh, this is great technique to do use when you meet somebody and their name is a name you haven't heard before. Right, yeah. because sometimes you meet somebody, and maybe ten or twenty percent of the time, and you're not familiar with the name. So you ask about it. What can you ask about a person's name? Things like how do you spell it? Where is it from? What does it mean? You know, and people take when you take interest. That's what I think is important. A lot of people are out there trying to just, and it's fine. You know, even on social media, we all do it. We try to look, you know, very interesting. But I, but I think really what was more important to people, especially when it's interpersonal, when it's you and someone else, it's not just being interesting, it's being interested. Yeah. Right. Because when you're interested, especially, you know, if just to be a good human being, but if you're in business, you certainly want to, because people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Right. And that, that, that technique doesn't, it's not a tactic, right. It's just care about other people and you're more likely to remember them. Right. And people are going to feel that, you know, Maya Angelou talked about people will remember what you said, but they remember how you made them feel mm-hmm. right. That feeling that's there. And so I would say, I would go back to asking them, you know, about their name, how they spell it, what it means and such. And finally the V and the E and suave, the V stands for visualize. And that's something that, you know, I've talked about a lot. I teach whole programs based on visualization, but we tend to remember more what we see more than what we hear, right? We remember someone's face, and we forget the name. You always go to someone and say, hey, I remember your face, but I forgot your name, right? You never go to someone and say the opposite. You never say, hey, you know, I, I remember your name, but I forgot your face. <laughs> that wouldn't make any sense. And so it's because just how it's brain anatomy. It's your, your visual cortex, and it's just bigger, and, and, and you can learn. There's a Chinese proverb that goes, what I hear, I forget. What I see, I remember. What I do, I understand. What I hear, I forget. I heard the name, forgot the name. What I see, I remember. I saw the face, I remember the face. And what I do, going back to practice and exercise, I understand. And so what I would say is if you tend to remember what you see, then try seeing what you really want to remember. So a very simple tip is you meet somebody, you take their name, and you turn it into a picture. Because we think in pictures. We dream in pictures. When you're on an airplane, it doesn't say, fasten your seatbelt. There's a picture, right? It doesn't say, no smoking. There's a picture, and it's a universal language, and yeah. certainly when it is for ourselves. When you're dreaming, nobody dreams and sees like closed caption subtitles on the bottom, <laughs> right? You don't think it's, it's pictures, right? And so if you meet somebody, and let's say their name is Mike, you can imagine them singing on a microphone, karaoke, in a split second, right? Someone named David, I use like a slingshot. Why? Because David of you know David... Yeah, David and Goliath, yeah. right? And so, and, and this is in the privacy of your own mind, but if it makes you smile or <laughs> chuckle, that's why you remember it. Information yeah. tied to emotion, you know, makes it memorable for you. If a person's name is Carol, imagine them, they're Christmas caroling. If someone's named Mary, imagine getting married, if, you know, and so on. And so that's, that's how, if a person's name is Bill, you could see dollar bills mm-hmm. that are there. Mm-hmm. And, make and it that's what's very powerful. <laughs> and finally, the E in suave stands for end end. Very, very simple. But I end every single conversation using a person's name. Because if you could walk into a room and meet 20 strangers and you leave saying goodbye to every single one of them using their name, who are they all going to remember? You. Yeah, completely. Yeah. And that's, that's why, that's why the end. The thing with this is a lot of the techniques, and we're, we're going through this, um, you know, very, uh, 
um, cause I want people to have usable tips to give them clarity of mind and improve their focus and improve their memory and such. But some people, what will keep you from doing these things is learn, knowledge is not power, right? Knowledge is potential power. My, my hope for people mm-hmm. is they turn that potential power into, into real power by actually taking action. But what, what will keep you from actually using it and imp- implementing it and taking action on it is this lie or this belief thinking that, oh, just because I know it, I, you know, I learned it or I could repeat it, but you don't know it unless you're doing it. That's and that, that's my thing with, with people. People could rehearse things and say things about their diet or, uh, and they could rehearse like everything maybe out of your book about sleep and everything. But if they're not doing it, I don't feel like people know it. And, yes. you know, why, why learn something if you're not going to apply it? And so I would say what would keep you from doing this stuff is the simplicity, is this thing where it's just, oh, it's, that's so simple or that's so fundamental and basic. But there's a reason why the fundamentals are the things that move the needle in our yeah. life. Mm-hmm. And everyone wants to know the next sexy secret sleep t- memory tip, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but it's the, it's, it's the fundamentals, the things yes. that aren't always that sexy, but those are, the results are incredibly sexy. Absolutely. You know, we just, very, very we have a summation of a lot of this information coming up and you've just said so many of the things that I've been talking about because it's not, and I, I said those same words, the next sexy diet program, exercise mm-hmm. program, DVD, even if DVDs don't exist anymore, really. <laughs> no, um, but sexy. it's it really boils down to, it's not what you do sometimes, it's what you do on a consistent basis. Mm-hmm. And that's what it's really about. And where Jim has, has been able to traverse uh, the landscape of life and to make it to where he is is because of that consistent application. And wow, we've got so many great wisdom nuggets here. They're overflowing. They're just, he's making it, it rain. I love so <laughs> when next up, we're going to actually cover some specific brain tips. How can we have a better brain? But first, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. With all of the things that we're exposed to today, the environmental toxicity, the weird stuff showing up in our food supply, we've got to do things to really support our immune system. Our immune system is really running the show on so many different levels to keep us healthy. And one of the most powerful things for supporting a healthy immune system is making sure that we're getting in some immunomodulators. So what does that mean? These are substances that can help to elevate our immune system in response to things that might be trying to creep their way into our body, into our cells, and defend us against those things. But it can also bring the immune system back down, calm it down if things are running too hot, aka we're dealing with some autoimmunity. We need things that are intelligent. Many drugs out there that are pushed through pharmaceutical companies, though they mean well, they push your immune system in one direction, and that can really mess things up on the back end, you know, leading to AKA side effects. So to avoid that, getting some natural immunoregulators are going to be a powerful thing you add into your life. How I do that, and it's been a consistent basis pretty much every single day for the past three months now, I've been using every day and even had it this morning, the incredible mushroom elixirs from Four Sigmatic. So head over to foursigmatic.com forward slash model. So that's F-O-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C dot com forward slash model. And you're going to get 10% off all of these amazing superfood elixirs. My favorite is the chaga. And chaga has been clinically shown to increase your NK cell activity. So your natural killer cells over 300%. It's also the most powerful antioxidant that we've ever seen in the history of humanity that humans actually consume. Powerful antioxidant, powerful anti-cancer, powerful immune system regulator. So that's what I use in the morning. I'll get some chaga and sometimes I'll have it straight or I'll blend it with some you know, hot water, some healthy fat. So this could be some ghee, this could be some grass-fed butter, this could be some coconut oil, some MCT oil, things like that. With a little bit of cinnamon, maybe some other fun medicinal herbs you can throw in there. But this has been the daily thing that I've done for the past few months. And I highly recommend you start doing the same thing. They also have the mushroom coffees. And my wife is a big fan of these. And so the mushroom coffee mix has cordyceps and chaga in there. And today she ran out. She was like, where's my where's my coffee? You know, she's not even ever since we've been together, she hasn't been a coffee drinker. But this has been her daily thing. She loves the way it makes her feel. And she doesn't get some weird kind of caffeine spike and crash as well. So head over and check them out. Foursigmatic.com forward slash model for 10% off. Now back to the show. 
And we are back, and we are talking with learning expert, memory expert, one of my best friends, Jim mm-hmm. Quick. And I'm still over here taking notes like <laughs> day one because of on page many of the things that he talks about, you know, and just being, uh, he, he took us through some important acronym, acronyms and um, uh, be suave and how important and valuable this is. But the belief is so important. It's the foundational piece for me. And I want to encourage that in everybody to really believe that you That's can right. become more, that yes, you can yes. express more of what's within you. And I love how he talked about earlier that uh, our having that growth mindset that our intelligence isn't fixed like our shoe size. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking about what about Shaq's shoe? You know, like, <laughs> that's kind of ridiculous. I wonder how smart he is. He's a super smart guy, though. I just watched one of those 30 for 30, I think, specials with About the Magic. Whole nother story. Great one, guys. You should check it out. Uh, but Jim is just providing so much value. And so next up, we're going to talk about how to improve that beautiful brain of yours. What are some simple things that we can do to actually feed your brain, to actually make your brain work more to its potential? So, Jim, what do you have for us? Yeah, we're going to go through, I'm going to give you 10 keys for unleashing what I call your superhero brain. Yes. Superhero brain, because that's that's what you want. Your, your brain, just like your body, everyone wants a body that's stronger, that's faster, that's quicker, right? that's sharper, and your, your brain can do the same thing. It can be stronger and faster and sharper. And so if, uh, and I tell people I'm more like a personal trainer for your brain Mm -hmm. and that's my commitment to be able to help it. So there are 10, 10 areas. We, we know, we talked about this in your previous episode that one third of your memory and that potential is predetermined by genetics and biology, but that means two thirds is completely in your control. Right. And that's exciting. So it's not your, it's not your age or biology. Most of it, twice as much of it is totally in your control, which is mostly in your lifestyle. So the 10 keys fall into those. Those are the things that move the needle. And I'm going to give you these 10 keys for unleashing your superhero brain. They're the 10 steps in no specific order. Um, but they are going to be extremely common sense because like we talked about before, it's the fundamentals and this common sense, but it's not always common practice. So when I yeah. go through these 10 keys, and, uh, and we'll give a giveaway out to help people to, to memorize these 10 things also, um, kind of for people to memorize a speech without notes and such. I'll use these 10 things as an example. But they're common sense, but they're not always common practice. So when they go through it, notice like which ones you're strong in and notice which ones could you really use some work. Because you could do nine of them, but if you fail to do one of them, then you could see why you're not getting the focus or the concentration or the mental agility or the mental energy to be able to succeed that to get you to your goals faster and quicker. So in no specific orders, those 10 keys are number one, a good diet. And I know we don't have a lot of time to go deep into each of these, but the idea is you are what you eat, right? And so literally what you're eating becomes, <laughs> becomes, you know, you. Yeah. And so, um, so that'd be a good brain diet. So the good brain foods, and I know, Sean, you've addressed this on previous podcasts. And you have a guest talk yeah. about these kind of things. But, you know, making sure you're getting the essential fats and, and, and the, the, the vitamins, nutrients, and you're eating the avocados and the berries and the, and, the, and the walnuts and all the things that activate your, your superior brain. Number two, you mentioned it already, um, killing ants. Uh, Dr. Daniel Amen coined the word ants, automatic negative thoughts, kill those ants. Because, you know, what you're saying to yourself is what you're going to be believing And uh, as you believe, you know, as as what the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve, but take care of that belief issue. So you want to kill those negative thoughts. Um, And there's all kinds of things that we, you know, that are out there to help people overcome those things. Things like uh, meditation, things like tap, you know, um, uh, um, tapping, things like age regression, self-hypnosis and so on. The third thing I would say that's key to unlocking your superhero brain is exercise. And we talked about this, but this is key because movement helps you to remember things. Movement helps you to be able to act, create those, those incredible hormones that it helps you to be able to activate your brain at the highest level, right? They call them the, the, the BDNFs, right? Yeah. Um, so that's very important, brain-derived non-nootropic factor. And so movement is what does that. It helps nourish the neurons, help them to grow into new ones, helps you to create new connections. Um, so that's very important. So that's number three is exercise. Number four is uh, brain nutrients, right? Your sponsor, <laughs> the yeah. brain nutrients, because sometimes you're on this fast lifestyle. You're traveling to the Philippines. You're going to all these different places, and sometimes it's hard to maintain the, that you know a good brain diet. So are you supplementing in those 
areas that help you to be able to, to nourish your brain. Um, and because uh, honestly, to create new brain cells, neurogenesis, it creates, it needs two things. It needs uh, nutrients and it, it requires novelty, right? Stimulus. And so, but you need those nutrients just like your body can <laughs> create, or create, create uh, better, you know, Habs or biceps, or whatever you have to give it novelty, right? Stimulus, but then you have to give it. You have to feed it too, right? And so that would be key four. Number five, and this is something that that's worth spending some time on, really thinking about, is your positive peer group. Positive peer group are the people you spend time with, because as we know, who you spend time with is who you become. And that social activity is so important. People could be doing all the other things. You could be having, you know, you could be killing the negative thoughts. You could be in automatic negative thoughts. You could be having a good brain diet. You could be exercising. Um, you could be supplementing with brain nutrients. But if you're spending time with negative people that are pulling you down, right? Are the people in your life that are negative, that aren't encouraging? But are you, you know, and the opposite is also true. Are you spending time with people that challenge you, that uplift you, that are kind to you? Um, because as um, Dr. Mark Hyman talks about, it's not just your, um, your health. It's not just your uh, biological networks or your neurological networks. It's your, it's your, it's your social networks. Hmm. Like whether or not you smoke or not is maybe not your biology as much as if your friends' friends smoke. Right, because the people you spend time with, they say you're the average of the five people you spend most time with. So, a positive peer group is important. Um, it's also important because um, keeping your loneliness, like when people are chronically, they feel like alone, even if they're around people, it it, it affects your brain. It, it contributes to dementia and all those kind of brain aging, you know, that that affects that. So that that's important. Um, so that's halfway there. That's number five. Number six is clean environment. I would recommend, and just think about this, how clean is your environment? Because your external reality is a, is a reflection of your internal reality. And you know when you clean your environment, you clean your office, you clean your desk, or you clean your desktop on your laptop or something, don't you feel a level of clarity, more of a level of peace and calm? And so that's important is managing your environment. Number seven um, that I'll put out there, and I think this is one of the most important ones, is the one that you're the, you know, absolutely another master at because, I mean, you're master of nutrition and the movement and the fitness, <laughs> but also, also sleep, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's seven is sleep. You could be doing everything and like what I, what I was suffering from the past three, four years and getting two hours of sleep, I mean, how do you feel after you get like a crummy night's of sleep? How good is your focus? How good are you at problem solving? How good is your mood or temperament, right? How much can you stare at a screen and really think about creativity? It's, it's, it's not possible. So you want to be able to, um, be able to, to get your sleep because um, superheroes require super sleep. Mm -hmm. And um, finally, eight, nine, 10, eight is brain protection. And I add this in recently because I've had a number of head injuries, right? When I was five, I had a very bad head injury and that led to all these learning challenges. And I've had a series of them with sports and such. But protect your brain, wear a helmet. Nine and 10, um, nine is new learnings, new learnings. We talked about neurogenesis, creating new brain cells. You could create new brain cells to the day you die. How exciting is that? You grow older, <laughs> but you could grow better. But also neuroplasticity is saying that your brain is like plastic in a good way. It's malleable. And that you could create new connections. That Einstein's brain wasn't bigger than anyone else's brain. Um, you know, it was actually smaller, but he had more connections in certain areas of his brain because he would do these thought experiments that we teach people. And those thought experiments created neuroplasticity, new connections between each other. And again, that comes from new learnings. And so everyone who's here with us, I, I give you big time props and, and you should pat yourself on the back because you're on this quest of lifelong learning, lifelong growth, and your life will reflect that. And so um, new learnings. And finally, number 10, and this is the big one because this is the one that people don't think about because we're so used to it, because we live in this environment, most of us, our physiology, our psychology, our work environment is um, stress management. And what I mean by that, one of the biggest supervillains that we face right now is this anxiety, this frustration, this, this undue levels of stress. Because when you're stressed, your, your, brain, your brain doesn't operate really well in stress. You create cortisol, adrenaline, which is good for fight or flight. But it's not good, again, if you need to prepare for a test. It's not good if you need to give a presentation. It's not good if you need to remember someone's name. So how are you managing your stress in the best way possible? And so these are, these are the 10 things that I like my clients to be able to focus on. I think it's the thing that moves the needle. And when I say to go through these and you're thinking about it because you wrote them down, which of these areas are you neglecting right now? 
Because sometimes a good coach is not somebody that knows more than you. Maybe a good coach is somebody who could see what you're doing when you're at your best and get you to do it more often and point mm. out those areas where you could really put a little bit, shine a little light on there and, uh, and attention there. Because you can do everything, but if you're stressed, that's going to affect you. You know, you can do everything on the list, but if you're not working out, you, your life is going to reflect it, right? You can do everything not getting enough sleep, and you're surely not going to be able to be, you know, a, a modern-day superhero. Absolutely. You know, these, so 10, these 10 things, uh, these are already ingrained for me, and it's yeah. because of the location method, this strategy that you teach, and so I know these things by heart. <laughs> and it's so funny, man, as you're going through it and I'm picturing the helmet and running through the, the, the door, the wall. Right. And, uh, but this is something that you're going to be able to teach everybody because with learning how to learn or improving your, your recall, your memory, many of these are action oriented. And that's what he actually put into mm -hmm. the, the acronym a... is active. Mm -hmm. Right. And so yeah. for you to be able to learn that and us not say, OK, just pause the podcast here um, <laughs> and go ahead and do this e exercise. Um, that's not really a, a viable thing for us to do. And so that's why I talked with Jim to see if he can give away some of his best trainings to teach people how to memorize this stuff. So you can learn these 10 points, like literally or whatever it might be for you, like in an instant mm -hmm. by, you know, the location method. And there's like these different things, these strategies that are just so profound. And it's utilizing the way that the brain actually works. And you all have the capacity to do this, to become a certified superhero and a, a learning expert yourself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because what this really boils down to, this isn't about, for me in this incredible experience that I've had um, and, and creating the show, the, the books and all the, the people that I've worked with over the years, this was a matter of me not learning more stuff, but learning how to learn. Mm -hmm. That was really the catalyst, becoming good at learning. And that opens the door so wide for so much good and so much a uh, uh, possibility and potential to to really show its face for you. And so, Jim, if you could, can you let people know where they can get connected yeah. to these trainings? Absolutely. Um, I know we spoke about this, but we wanted to gift everyone as a thank you uh, for being part of this conversation and being active and for sharing this episode and everything. We want to thank you. We created four videos for you. Mm -hmm. And these are in-depth trainings on how to be a memory master, how to unleash your superhero memory, be able to learn faster. And so in this, I, I go deeper in the subjects we talked about, how to remember names, um, how to be able to remember these 10 keys, how to give a speech without notes. And you can get that free gift uh, as a thank you for listening at jimquick.com forward slash model. And that's okay. jimquick is kwik.com forward slash model. And you can go down there and, um, and be able to get those four trainings as a gift. And as a thank you for being on the superhero journey with us. Man, we're Perfect. thanking you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've got a, a page full of notes here. And again, I'm even telling the you, things I'm that, going on page four myself. <laughs> even the things that I've already learned mm -hmm. and that I've implemented, and these are part of who I am still, it goes back to one of his points of mm -hmm. the fast. Mm -hmm. Forget. All right? Forget, Forget about... what you already know. For, exactly. That's right. And that's what a willing student mm -hmm. will do. You know, mm -hmm. empty your cup and just be an open vessel. And so I'm he sitting here riveted, just yeah. Yeah. taking notes and listening and enjoying mm -hmm. because as Jim talked, we could talk all day I and mean, I really. could listen to him all day. And of course, I have things to share with him as well. But just being able to sit and to absorb mm -hmm. is such a great gift. And for, for somebody like Jim, you're a gift, man. You are literally a walking, Living talking gift. Yes. gift to so many people. And I just want to thank you for saying yes to your greatness and to continue to do what you do. And I just appreciate you so much, man. Well, I appreciate the two of you so much. And I thank you, everyone, for listening. I appreciate the capes that you wear. Mm -hmm. I, I really, going through these learning challenges for so long. It's just my thing is I just don't want people to suffer the way that I suffered. And imagine this place growing up as a kid, I actually it took me an extra few years to learn how to read. I taught myself how to read by reading comic books late at night. That's why I love this idea of real life superheroes. And imagine a world full of real life superheroes where we all find our superpowers. We discover them and we're developing them and we're using them to help each other out. That's and that's, uh, that's a pretty awesome world. And so I want to thank you for the gifts that you guys, two of you have shared and uh, blessings to you and your community Absolutely. so much. Man, mm -hmm. Jim, thank you so much. And I received that. And everybody, mm -hmm. thank mm -hmm. you so much for tuning into this episode. And 
talk about value. You know, I really, truly do. I know that you got a lot of value out of this, and I, I hope that you apply it, as Jim mentioned. It's not just about knowing a bunch of stuff, but it's putting yeah. it into action. Yeah. And definitely take advantage of that free gift and the more advanced trainings to really go deeper into this stuff because it really does work. It's just mm -hmm. teaching you how your brain actually works to recall things, to memorize things, uh, because it's a valuable skill in life in so many different areas, you know. Uh, but we have this amazing super it's more than a computer you know <laughs> like just sitting there and it's we don't get an owner's manual to it and to get this kind of information because again this isn't stuff that we're taught in school i i remember the closest thing that i could think of even remotely tiny little, 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 little <laughs> bit of getting close to this is study <laughs> skills class yeah that i had in seventh grade and i remember the teacher I was grateful for that. she was uh obsessed with garfield so there's like garfield <laughs> all over the classroom it was like garfield little um uh, chalkboard thing at the top of that, Gar Garfield erasers, pictures. It's a grown woman. Yeah. I mean, she's like probably in her 50s and just like obsessed with Garfield. And you but her. it's so memorable, yeah. right? Yeah. And, you know, we talked about some study skills and it was more on repetition. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about that already. Re repetition is the mother of skill. You know, we, we, repetition does have a place for sure, but it's the repetition of your daily practices, right? That's what really does it. But your ability to learn faster, there's no cap on that. You don't have to uh, repeat, you know, uh, the, the, these 10 things again every day, day after day. You can learn it mm -hmm. in two minutes and be locked in like forever That's by right. utilizing these strategies and learning how to use your brain. So definitely make sure to take advantage of that. And I like to also share this parting point that Jim said, which is your mind is always eavesdropping on your self-talk. There you go. And we must... We absolutely must focus on cultivating a positive self-image and this positive self-belief that we can learn, that we can be great. You have the opportunity to do that. You have to believe first before the world believes. That's right. All right? It starts with you and tapping into your greatness, and you have it within you because you're listening to this. Yeah. All right? And, and Jim mentioned this at the very beginning. We're kindred spirits, and... And I appreciate you so much for being a part of the Model Health Show team and much more good stuff to come. So make sure to stay tuned. Take care. Have an amazing day. And I'll talk with you soon.